Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today, ooh, I'm excited to talk about something that I think is really, really positive, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, do you know somebody that actually is a quadriplegic, somebody that can't move? Do you know somebody that is severely disabled? You know what? I feel really bad for that because let me tell you something right now. I have, one of my biggest fears is like waking up blind or losing the ability to hear or potentially losing the ability to move a limb, right? I'm somebody that enjoys, you know, taking walks with the family. I'm somebody that enjoys playing video games. I'm somebody that enjoys looking at weird stuff on the internet. And if I lost any senses, then uh, honest to God, I think it would be incredibly difficult, if not near impossible for me to cope. But human beings are really good at trying to take a really bad situation and live the best that they can. So today I want to talk a little bit more about Neuralink. Now you remember the last time we looked at Neuralink, people were moving mice around and controlling actual desktop devices. Now the last time I covered Neuralink, I kind of equated it a little bit to these eye tracker tools, right? I figured if that's as far as these brain, you know, implant technologies are going so far, they're not too far away from these like non-invasive eye tracker tools, right? So this is the Toby eye tracker. You basically connect this little Wii sensor bar to your computer and it basically can detect where you're looking at on your screen. So I figured if somebody is severely disabled where they can't operate a computer or move a mouse, they might be able to use something like this to look at an icon and maybe blink their eyes twice to double click and bring up an on-screen keyboard and start using a computer even if they can't move their limbs, right? Because I think in the modern day and age, trying to use a smartphone or a computer is kind of a fucking requirement. Now, of course, for anybody that doesn't know, Neuralink is Elon Musk's brain implant company. Now, I feel like if, you know, whatever you think, right, this is probably the one thing that I actually believe Elon Musk, uh, you know, has like a really like, th this is one of the very altruistic things I think of. Now, obviously, would I ever get somebody's brain chip implanted in me? Dog, <laughs> I browse the internet in like two layers of virtual machines, all right? The last thing I'll ever get is a fucking brain chip unless it's literally required for me to live, okay? Like, I would die if I don't get something like this installed in my head. So basically, this is a brain interface technology, and of course, you can see individuals over here who actually have this technology installed right into their head. So this is literally your brain chips, I believe, charging uh, tab or something of that nature, where basically the actual device charges by going near like a wireless induction charger and like, you know, charging into your head. I think that's how it really works. Correct me if I'm wrong. I also think that's really dangerous because induction chargers get really hot. And the last thing I want is heat applied near my brain. But I'm sure the doctors have thought about that, okay? I hope at least they have. So, of course, this is the actual implant, and apparently it is literally cosmetically invisible, okay? In fact, they use, like, a very special, uh, you know, almost sewing machine to get this thing installed into your head and thread it up. So, that's, again, just a basic understanding of what Neuralink is. Now, what's really cool is about a couple days ago, uh, they had a progress update for one of their studies where they got, like, a second person involved in Neuralink. So this individual, Alex, okay, was basically at the Barrow Neurological Institute, okay? So again, you know, this is a, again, it's it's not just Neuralink talking about this. They're, they've involved another large organization, a medical organization, to help back up the claims. So what they said was Alex gets their surgery and was discharged the following day. And while the recovery was smooth, the link, he was allowed to be basically playing video games and even learned how to use computer-aided design software, so CAD software and basically designed 3D software. So again, this is huge, all right? Like about a day after recovery, you're starting to play video games now with the actual Neuralink device. So ladies and gentlemen, I shit you not, this is apparently footage provided by the Neuralink people, and this is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So literally Geo, this is not Counter-Strike 2, you can basically tell by the HUD, this is allegedly Alex, okay, basically Alex, playing fucking Counter-Strike Global Offensive, moving their character, moving the mouse, aiming around through the use of this BCI Neuralink software that allows them to control basically their computer device. Now, again, if this is completely real, this is insane to watch. 
Because compared to the last time when we were looking at Neuralink and like moving the mouse around, what you're basically seeing over here is somebody who is moving their character around. So you got to think WASD. And then alongside doing that process, also moving the mouse as they're moving their character. So literally what me and you would do with like a keyboard and mouse, this person is apparently doing with a implant connected right into their brain, which is insane. Now, before anybody goes, but Muna, <laughs> would this constitute as aimbot? Okay, okay, let, let's, just, let's, just, let's just cut the funny out here. The only people that I think are ever going to get this kind of an implant are people that, again, suffer from a serious medical issue, okay? Nobody should probably be getting these things unless, of course, they need this to function in society. So one of the things that basically Neuralink led us to was they basically showed us the moment Alex connected their link to the computer, which is the device you use to interface with the computer. So kind of like, from what I understand, like a mouse dongle. So imagine their Neuralink is like a mouse. The link is effectively like the uh, wireless mouse connection uh, tool to the actual system. So looking into it, within a few hours, apparently, he was able to surpass the maximum speed and accuracy it achieved with any other assistive technology on something known as WebGrid. So WebGrid over here is a special game that basically tests how you can precisely move that mouse around. So I'm gonna do it, obviously, without the Neuralink in my head. I'm just gonna use my tried and true hands and basically move this mouse around and click these blue uh, dots. Now, of course, I have to do this for about a minute and basically the goal is, is me being able-bodied, can I beat somebody who requires a Neuralink in order to do this exact task that I'm doing in front of you? So yeah, you know, the, the first thing you do probably with any of these devices, it's not just Neuralink, it's like other BCI technologies. It's actually try to move things. Now obviously I'm not, I don't think I'm doing that great because I'm still at like 4.25 and I think the actual number for, oh, I failed right there, I hit the red. <laughs> So, of course, you know, I'm doing this, but I can only imagine somebody who just got like a day out of surgery already starting to do this. But again, you know, going through this, we've got 27 seconds left. Let me just bam, bam, bam. Hopefully I can actually get like a high score. Hopefully I don't look like a total idiot doing this. But boom, 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 boom. All right, we got 13 seconds. I need to hit at least like a 10, dude. I need to hit at least like a 10. <laughs> just give me one 10. Give me a 10, dude. Okay, uh, there we go. Mm, mm, and Oh, there we go. So your peak score is 9.16 BPS, which is 56 NTPM. So using the N1 implant, what is the N1 implant? Oh, that's the original one, okay. Uh, our first clinical trial participant reached 9.51 BPS on a 16 inch MacBook Pro in full screen mode. So effectively, what I have learned over here is my first attempt using able-bodied hands, I failed next to somebody that had an actual brain chip. So yeah, uh, apparently if that's the case, goddamn, is it actually effective? So, you know, looking into the Counter-Strike stuff, like obviously that shit is impressive. You know, going back to that footage, literally somebody is actually playing an entire video game. And uh, I don't know why they're censoring the name. I think it might be due to the fact that uh, the person might suffer like a, I think a back ban, uh, depending on what this tool is going to do. But yeah, so generally the idea is, is obviously, you know, you connect this to your computer or whatever device and you're just able to, you know, communicate with it, provided it has that, you know, understanding of how Neuralink works. Now I assume that at the very base level, when it's connected to any PC device, it probably registers at a as a mouse. But this led me down another rabbit hole where I started to look at other technologies like this. Now, obviously, if you've ever seen uh, things like brainwave mouse technology, we just talked about way back in 2010, apparently using neural oscillation to move a mouse around. None of this is entirely new. But another company that I found that was also in the space of competition with Neuralink was this one BlackRock Neurotech. Now, I don't know if this is entirely re related to like BlackRock, the investment group. But this is another BCI system where literally, if you actually look at it, it's like this special little device that is connected to the top of your head and they use a special threat system to communicate with it. So I believe this isn't like as clean as Neuralink. Like Neuralink is literally lodged into your head and you know, your, your scalp is put back on, you know, things are filled up. So it literally is designed to look cosmetically invisible, right? 
So yeah, these guys say they have like 19 years of human studies. Which, like, obviously, I, I imagine that, like, means complete R&D and understanding the simple concepts rather than the actual technology. So that what they said, according to their tech, BCI pioneers are able to eat, drink, send emails, and operate shit like robotic arms, right? Now, this is obviously a bit more invasive than the Neuralink stuff, but they got a little tube that's connected to their head. It's almost like something out of, like, a cyberpunk dystopia in a way but except this is actually good like it's actually helpful to somebody's you know life right so what i saw here was even wilder somebody was working on a photoshop tool literally doing like drawings literally doing photoshop work through the use of this technology so one of the people over here james johnson is like sitting in front of their photoshop tool basically moving the mouse around and obviously you know inputting keyboard prompts with their like BCI technology and operating an entire computer. Dog, that shit right there is seriously fucking impressive. And obviously I think it's not just limited to like playing Counter-Strike. If, you know, there are people out there that can actually go back to a proper quality of living and use technology, these brainwave, uh, you know, technologies, these BCI technologies, brain interface things. I think that is about the most positive, awesome thing that I've ever actually seen in the entire world. Honestly, the big thing about this video and the big thing about looking at this is we've gotten a lot beyond just using a mouse. You know, the Counter-Strike example is amazing in the sense that if somebody is able to control, right, multiple facets, and if somebody is, is able to play a video game like that, a complex title, literally using this one technology, then it's a pretty good sign to see what could happen in the future. Again, a lot of this stuff is still very early. So, you know, Neuralink is not, I think it's not going to really be coming out in mass production so far. This is still yet the second clinical trial that they've shown, or the second, uh, you know, actual patient in this entire situation. What they kind of got over here is they're talking about the link. Apparently, they're planning on making it interact with more stuff. Like, apparently, you're going to be able to feed yourself and move more independently. And by controlling this robotic arm or, like, having the ability to do that and even wheelchairs... You know, obviously, this is a big stretch to ask, but I could only imagine, like, way down in the future if, like, people who can't even operate a motor vehicle are suddenly able to operate a, you know, electric vehicle or, like, anything using BCI technology. I mean, like, the way that they've kind of had this described, the possibilities are honestly a bit limitless, to be honest with you. But honestly, at the end of the day, I gotta be real with you, I'm very impressed by this kind of stuff. And normally I'm not this much of a futurologist, but as somebody that, like, looks at technology like upcoming stuff this was something that you know it was cool when the mice were being moved but even then i started comparing it to technologies that didn't require surgical procedures to go into your head but if we're at a point where like months down the road we're able to actually operate like counter-strike global offensive and again that's just like a dip into the water down the road people who need to be able to access computers again or be able to you know get back to some quality of living it's good to see that technologies like this are actually advancing at a rate that i think is a bit unprecedented but yeah i wanted to share that because honestly i thought the whole counter-strike playing with your brain stuff was pretty cool <laughs> literally i thought it would be science fiction i did not expect in my life to be able to see that shit play out okay something i would have seen way back way back in the day <laughs> Like, late 90s, this shit, early 2000s, this would probably be like a giant meme. Did not expect it to actually become a reality this relatively early in my life. But, I'm I, I'm shocked. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.